welcome to today's video, which is all about backgrounds and specifically which ones that I think make for the absolute best backgrounds for portrait photography. Before we get into this video, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be giving away a brand new 128 gigabyte SD card to one lucky winner. For a chance to win, leave a comment on this video letting me know which is your favorite portrait photography background and why you like it. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel as well. I'll choose one lucky comment at random from one of my subscribers and I'll send this out to you anywhere in the world that you might be. Now, back to the video. Here at my studio, I use a variety of different backgrounds. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The most common one that you're probably going to see in my own work is seamless paper. They come in a variety of different sizes so that you could use them to photograph individuals all the way to group shots uh, with some of the wider backdrops. They give you a lot of versatility, but if you want different colors, which you probably will, you're going to need some space and some ways to kind of manage and to store all of your backdrops. Another option are these hand painted custom canvas backdrops like the one that you see here from Gravity Backdrops. These are like the ones that you see in all of the big fashion magazines out there and they're all custom. They're all unique. Um, they're super beautiful and they come in different sizes just like seamless paper does, but they often cost quite a bit more than paper and they require some maintenance to keep them looking good. A cool idea for a backdrop that I learned from one of my favorite photographers, Gavin O'Neill, is to use a V-flat like these that you see here from V-flat World. These set up quick and they give you a white background. If you flip it, you get a black background. And of course, if you wanted to get a gray background, you actually could get gray using the white as well. And what's also really handy is you can get a piece of seamless paper and with some gaff tape, you could actually tape uh, seamless paper on this. You could change the color of your backgrounds really quickly and easily. Let me show you a few other options here before I share with you my favorite background. This is a vinyl background that Savage makes, the same company that makes the seamless paper. And it's got a print on the inside of it. And so if you watched my one light video from a few months back, you probably remember this background. It's really nice and it's relatively affordable for this type of thing. Uh, I'll add links to everything that I'm showing you in the description of this video. Now that we've looked at a few different background options that are available to you, let's talk about the one that I've used the most over the years. And it's the one that I would consider to be the best that you can get if you are starting out. These are collapsible backgrounds. The ones that I use are made by Savage, which is the same company that makes the seamless paper and the vinyl backdrops that I showed you earlier. But there are a number of different companies out there who also make these. At any rate, here are the top three reasons why I would consider these to be the best overall option. The first reason is portability. Oftentimes I'll end up having to take portraits on location at an office or a conference room and having a backdrop that I can fold up and carry like a reflector is really nice, especially considering that you end up having to lug around the rest of your gear too. If you buy the kit, it comes with everything that you need. All right, so if you end up getting one of these, you might find it a little bit tricky to try to fold it up for the first time. So I'm going to show you how to do it really quick, really easy. You're going to love this. I call it the taco method, and you're going to see why here in a moment. First things first, we're going to take the background. We're going to have it in front of us horizontally. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your palms and kind of have both of them facing uh, away from you. So you're going to hold each side of the background and put it as wide as you can go. And you're basically just gonna fold the background like a taco, right? And that's why I call it the taco method. So you bring it in and you're gonna see that straight away the background kind of wants to fold in on itself, which is great. You wanna let it do that. So basically just fold it and it's gonna overlap. So right now this side is under, so I'll show you from this side. Notice it's folding in and this side is going over the top. So start over again, folding goes in and over, and I'm basically just turning my wrist so that now it's facing down. This side, my left side is not moving. My right wrist is basically just turning it over. And there you go, really easy. Okay, the second reason that I love these is how easy they are to set up. 
With the exception of the V-flat or maybe using a wall, most of the other options will require some extra time to set them up. And if for some reason you decide that you don't like the color and you want to swap it for something different, you'll have to do everything all over again. Check this out though, because these backdrops are double-sided, switching it out to another color is as easy as just flipping it over to the other side. If you happen to own a few of these, you can have them stacked up and placed up against the wall, just waiting for you to use them. And within minutes, you could shoot multiple looks in about the same amount of time that it would take for you to put up one seamless or canvas backdrop. The third reason really boils down to how much space these things take up. As you can see with seamless paper, you have to have some space to store these. I got these backdrop stands from Savage for my studio and each one holds up to about 12 rolls of paper, but they also require you to have some fairly high ceilings to get them in and out of the stand. This, in comparison, is what six collapsible backdrops look like. And of course, because they're double-sided, it's kind of like having 12 different backdrops. You can stash these away under a bed or on a storage shelf somewhere, but overall, they end up taking a lot less room and they're just a little bit better for storage than some of the other background options that are out there. If you're curious to see how these backdrops look in use, Here's a gallery of some different images that I've taken using these backdrops. I'm going to leave some links for some of my favorite backgrounds in the description of this video, so be sure to check that out. And while you're there, if you got some value out of this video, please do me a favor and leave a like, maybe even consider subscribing as I release new videos here every week. Now, if you want to learn more about portrait photography, check out the video that you see here on your screen, and I'll see you over on that video.